In this series of videos, I'll provide students with suggestions for improving their case debating in the 2AC. This is the fourth video in the series. The first focused on strategy. The second explained signposting. The third was about argumentation. The last video will provide specific tips for how to practice. This video will focus on efficiency. On my YouTube channel, there are two versions of a lecture called The Art of Speaking Efficiently. That lecture begins with an extended quotation from Frederick Robinson's 1919 book, Effective Public Speaking, about the relationship between efficient speaking and effective speaking. Robinson argues, and I agree, that efficiency in public speaking is really about effectiveness. The rest of that lecture goes into much more depth about the value of efficiency, the most common inefficiencies I see from debaters, and drills debaters can do to improve their efficiency. I won't repeat any of that here. If you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to do so. So what is efficiency? As Robinson defines it, efficiency in public speaking means eliminating waste. An efficient speech effectively communicates arguments without wasting any of its allotted time. From this perspective, we could say that a speech is efficient if it effectively communicates the maximum amount of content within the allotted time. But even maximum amount can be misleading. It's not just about the quantity of arguments communicated in a speech, it's also about the quality of those arguments. An efficient speech gets the most value from its allotted time by exclusively communicating quality arguments. No time is wasted. It's therefore helpful to define efficiency as succinctness, using only the words necessary to convey an idea. Succinctness has two components, brevity and clarity. Brevity means using the fewest words necessary to express an idea. It comes from the Latin concept of brevitas, or communicating an idea using only the minimum essential words. There's no filler or fluff. Every word matters, and your words pack a punch. They imply more than is said. Clarity means using only the right words to express an idea. Words are chosen carefully to directly communicate exactly what you mean. There's no confusion. This is an important counterbalance to brevity. It's not just that you want to minimize the number of words you use, it's that you want to choose the right words. Efficient argumentation is valuable in every debate speech, but it's particularly important in the context of 2AC case debating. 1NCs are often quite broad, challenging the affirmative to answer a myriad of off-case positions while also defending their case against a long list of analytical and evidence-based responses. In order to deliver a successful case speech, the 2A needs to balance coverage with completeness and diversity with depth. I explain these strategic aspects of 2AC case debating in the first video in this series, but suffice it to say that it's very challenging to consistently do this well. Sometimes the 2AC is very thorough on the case, but this takes up so much of their time that they don't effectively counter the negatives off case positions. Other times the 2AC is very brief on the case, conserving plenty of time to respond to off case positions, but then the negative dismantles their case in the 2NC and 2NR. Figuring out the right balance is difficult, but speaking efficiently gives you the best chance of getting it right. Why? because an efficient speech makes the most of its allotted time. If everything you say when you're debating the case is a high quality argument, you'll be able to more completely answer each negative response without taking up so much time that you undercover their off-case position. Inefficiency creates a ceiling for how successful your 2AC can be. Flowability is the standard by which efficiency is judged. Speaking more efficiently is not useful if the judge does not understand and flow your arguments. Both brevity and clarity play an important role in flowability. Brevity ensures that judges hear only what they need to hear and nothing more. Get to the point. Clarity ensures that judges understand your argument and, just as importantly, understand how to flow it. This demands short, flowable labels, not long taglines. Don't be unreasonable with your expectations of the judge. Make it as easy as possible for them to flow your arguments. Tom Petty is my all-time favorite musician, and he had a famous songwriting maxim. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. This is very good advice for debaters. When making an argument, the judge is most likely to understand and flow the first thing you say. If the first thing you say is an author name, that's what they'll try to write down. If the first thing you say is the 1AC tagline you're extending, they'll try to write down the first part of it. 
even if you eventually get around to making an actual argument, it's unlikely that the judge will flow it. Therefore, you should front load your argument. The first thing you should say should be what you want the judge to write down. Then, footnote a citation and add additional reasoning. Argument, that's author, not author says argument. The two previous videos in this series were about signposting and argumentation. That advice will also help you become more efficient. Clear and consistent signposting minimizes the time you spend giving directions instead of making arguments. Following the two main argumentation principles, refute, don't restate, and reasons, not claims, will help you craft better arguments that take less time to make and that are easier for judges to flow. The key is to eliminate filler. Needless references to negative arguments, unnecessary repetition of 1AC taglines, Sparknotes style summaries of 1AC evidence, unwarranted restatement of 1AC claims, hyperbolic commentary on negative arguments, and illusion of depth style repetition that says the same thing twice but with different wording. You'll also need to identify and unlearn any of the general writing and speaking inefficiencies you've developed. My video, The Art of Speaking Efficiently, can help you do that. Overviews can sometimes be useful when debating the case in the 2AC, but they need to have a purpose. The question you should ask yourself is whether there's anything that you could say more effectively in an overview than you could on the line-by-line. -line. If the answer is yes, include an overview. But the answer is often no, and that's okay. I'll share a few examples of good reasons and bad reasons to include an overview. There are at least three good reasons to include an overview on the case in the 2AC. First, you have a good reason to believe that your judge will not understand your case. This might be because your case is new or tricky, or because the judge lacks experience with the topic. In these situations, a brief, direct, well-crafted thesis statement can be a useful way to begin. When done well, it sets the context for the rest of your case responses. The judge might understand more of your line-by-line -line debating because they first heard your thesis statement. Second, the negative seems to have misunderstood your case. If several of the 1NC's responses seem unresponsive, and if you'll be repeatedly explaining why neg arguments don't apply on the line-by-line, -line, it can be helpful to start by explaining your thesis. This is an opportunity for an effective connection moment. Clearly state your thesis and explain why the 1NC's front line missed its mark. This can't replace individual line-by-line -line responses to each 1NC argument, but it can make those responses more effective. Third, the negative dropped one or more of your impacts. If there is no clear place to extend your impact on the line-by-line, -line, it can be appropriate to do so in the overview. To be effective, this must be brief, direct, and clear. A lengthy resummary of the 1AC impact evidence is an unnecessary waste of time. On the other hand, there are two common reasons that I've heard students give to explain why they included an overview that I think are bad. First, you think that by extending your thesis and impact in the overview, it won't matter at all or as much if you dismiss or drop line-by-line -line arguments. But this isn't true. Extending your 1AC does not answer the 1NC, so you're still dropping or functionally dropping the arguments you've dismissed. To be effective, an overview must accomplish something that can't be accomplished as well on the line-by-line. -line. It cannot replace the line-by-line. -line. Second, you think that by extending your thesis and impact in the overview, you'll save time on the line-by-line. -line. This isn't true. You'll either repeat yourself when answering 1NC arguments that dispute the things you said in the overview, or you'll dismiss the 1NC's specific objections by asserting that was above, referring to your prescripted generic overview. This neither saves time nor improves the quality of your arguments. An overview is by definition an addition to your speech. Only include one if it creates enough value to justify the extra time. This brings me to another important suggestion. When thinking about your case impacts in the 2AC, you should be thinking about how to use them to defeat the negative's arguments. Using an impact is different from extending it. When most debaters extend their impact, they sound like Chris Farley's interview with Paul McCartney on SNL. Hey judge, remember that first impact we read in the 1AC? Yeah, well that was awesome. I, I know they said some stuff about how it wasn't that awesome, but remember how it was really awesome? Effective impact debating in the 2AC requires two things defending your impact against the negative's responses to it, and leveraging your impact against the negative's off-case position. Defending your impact is pretty straightforward, but using your impact might not be something you've thought about before. 
By use, I mean applying the impact in ways that advance the overall AF position in the debate. This can include a lot of things that tend to only happen in the final rebuttals. Weighing your impact against a DA, arguing that your impact accesses or turns a DA impact, transforming your impact into a DA to a counterplan or K alternative, using your impact to take out the impact uniqueness of a DA, etc. None of these arguments will be fully developed in the 2AC, but a good 2AC will introduce many of them throughout their speech. This is much more valuable than a straightforward impact extension. From the judge's perspective, the AF's impacts will never be evaluated in a vacuum. They will always be weighed against a competing negative position. The more the AF can apply and compare their impacts, the more likely they will convince the judge to endorse their position. As you improve your efficiency, you'll need less time than you did before to answer the same set of case arguments. Some of that extra time should be reallocated to the off-case positions, but some of it needs to be reinvested into the case. Take some of that extra time and use it to slow down on the case. I know this can seem like terrible advice. Isn't the whole point of becoming more efficient so that you can make more arguments? I understand that sentiment, but remember that efficiency is really about effectiveness. 2AC case arguments are extremely challenging for judges to flow, so slowing down will help your judges understand and flow more of what you're saying. If you're making strong arguments, this can have significant benefits for the rest of the debate. From a judge's perspective, there is an enormous difference between hearing the 2NC try to take apart an affirmative case you barely understand and hearing the 2NC try to take apart an affirmative case you understand well. With more efficiency, slow down on the case. In this video, I've explained how to improve the efficiency of your 2AC case debating. Remember, efficiency is about effectiveness. To be effective, a debate speech must get the most value from its allotted time by exclusively communicating quality arguments. The techniques discussed in this video will help you achieve that goal when debating the case in the 2AC. If you haven't done so already, I suggest that you watch the first three videos in this series about strategy, signposting, and argumentation. The last video in the series will explain how to practice. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.